My definition of a vector is an expandable array. For math vectors, I use vector2 and vector3. I'll be writing this in C, but the concept should easily be transferred to any other language. Let's say we have an array of size 4 that holds clothing articles and is filled. Because arrays are set size, we can't add socks to this already filled array. So the fix in this example we will use is a vector. A vector will double the size of the array and copy the contents over, and now the socks can fit. We can use the same idea for downsizing the array. When removing from the array, if we are less than half the space, we can free up that memory by creating an array half the size and copying the contents over. In the description, I've included a repository that holds boilerplate for this project, the script I am reading, the finished project we will make, and all other related files. You might notice I am on Linux. I've also tested this code on Windows with MySys2 using their UCRT MinGW and had no issues with it. If you do have any issues, please let me know. My contact information is in the description. If you are watching this video when it comes out, I most likely won't have made a video for Arc Arno and Arc Bull yet. We will be using them both and they are part of the boilerplate. If you don't want to deal with the boilerplate, using a printf or whatever your language uses to output will work for what we use Arc Arno for. And C has standard bool.h, which is pretty much all Arc Bool is. Like with Arc Arno and Arc Bool, if you are watching when this video releases, I will not have gone over setting up CMake for a library. So for this, I'd recommend either making a normal CMake list.txt which I have a video on and is linked in the description, or using the cmakelist.txt provided in the boilerplate. If the CMake library video has come out and you have seen it, I would recommend using that cmakelist.txt and adding this to the library. If you don't like CMake, I have also included a simple boilerplate. Though, if you use the simple boilerplate, do not include from arc slash standard slash you should be able to include the headers directly as they are in the same folder. And for tests, use dot dot slash src slash like the header that is already included in the boilerplate. Headers to me are the best place for documentation. I try to document code as much as possible, though because this process takes a long time, I'll speed up the footage of me writing the documentation when we get to it. I'll write out the boilerplate for those not using a boilerplate, Let's add the include guards, and to keep this from erroring, if we want to use this in C++, we will add extern C if underscore underscore C++ is defined and close that out. To get more out of this video, I will recommend different challenges to complete while having the video paused. The first challenge is to write down functions you think a vector will need. You might come up with different functions, which could be handy later down the line, so please feel free to keep the functions even if it is not what we end up having in this video. In this video, we will be writing an extremely basic system. I'd recommend pausing the video and trying the challenge now. For our basic implementation, we will have a vector type, a comparison callback, a creation function, a destruction function, an add function, a remove function, a remove index function, a get size function, and a get function and we'll go over these when we get to them in the C file. Now that we have a basic outline for what a vector will be, let's create the arc vector struct in the C file. Now your next challenge is to fill that struct with what you think we will need. I'd recommend pausing the video and trying the challenge now. For what we will be using in this video for the basic vector type are four things. The first will be a void star star or an array of unknown types. Two uint 32 ts for storing the current size and what our current capacity will be. And lastly, a callback for a compare data function.
The callback compare data function is used when removing an item from the vector. This is handy if the vector holds a matching item that is in a different pointer from the one we check. Though, for our default compare data function, we can just check to see if the pointers are the same as we don't have any more information for what the void pointer holds. I like writing creation and destruction functions together and editing them together so I'm a lot less likely to get a memory leak. If you are using an object-oriented language, the creation and destruction functions will be your constructors and destructors. Your next challenge is to try writing the creation and destruction functions. I'd recommend pausing the video and trying the challenge now. We'll first malloc the vector itself, create the data with one slot, and set current capacity to 1, then set current size to 0. From experience, I recommend always assigning the value to any variable or type you create, even if that value is null, in the creation function or constructor. Lastly, we will assign compare data function with the default function. Then, assign the value passed in through parameters if it is not null. I like doing things this way so I don't have to use the else keyword. I don't know why, but I really don't like the else keyword. Now to destroy the vector. We need to free everything we have allocated, so we'll call free on the data and then the vector itself. Let's now write an add function. You know the drill. The challenge is to take a crack at writing your own add function. I'd recommend pausing the video and trying the challenge now. First, we need to check if the vector is completely filled up, and if it is, we can't add anything and we'll throw an error. Next, we can check to see if the current size is equal to the current capacity. If it is, we will need to increase the capacity. Because we are simply doubling the vector, we can bit shift current capacity's value left 1. If bit shifting is confusing to you, feel free to times the value by 2. After setting current capacity to the doubled size, we need to actually double the vector size. We will use realloc as that will change the vector size and copy the contents at the same time. Lastly, we will add the data to the vector at its current size and increase that current size by 1. For this example, we have two different remove functions, and to make things easier, we can do most of the logic of removing in one function. We'll do that in the remove index function. The challenge, as you probably guessed, is to write the remove index function. I'd recommend pausing the video and trying the challenge now. To remove with an index, we first should check if the index actually exists in the vector. As we are using an unsigned 32-bit integer, we can just check to see if the index is the same as the current size or greater. If it is, we are out of bounds. Next, we can iterate from the given index to the end, copying the next value back 1. This will override the index's value and shift everything back 1. To make sure we don't go out of bounds of the vector's array, we will check if index plus 1 is out of bounds in the for loop. Now we can decrease the current size by 1. We should check to see if the current size is not the same as half the capacity or if the capacity is 1. There is no reason to have a capacity of 0. And if it is either of those two things, we don't need to do anything else so we can return. Now we can safely half the capacity, so we'll bit shift right. Again, if you are uncomfortable bit shifting, feel free to do integer division by 2. And we can realloc again to size down and copy the contents. Most of the heavy lifting went into the remove index function. We will place the remove function in the C file above the remove index function just to match the header. The challenge is to see if you can write the remove function. A slight hint for if you have followed along with the code, remember, there is a callback in the vector struct. I'd recommend pausing the video and trying the challenge now. Now all we need to do is iterate through the data, checking for a match with the compare data function, and on match, remove the item at the index. I personally don't see a reason to throw an error if nothing is removed, at least in the majority of uses I can think of, so we won't do that. 
though in the header, there is a note in the documentation letting any user know that this is the case. For our last non-bonus challenge, please try to write the get size and get functions. I'd recommend pausing the video and trying the challenge now. For the get size function, we can just return the vector's current size. For the get function, we should error check for if it is out of bounds, and if it is, we can throw an error and log that it is out of bounds, then return null. Otherwise, we can return the data value at the index. To make sure everything works and that we don't have any memory leaks, let's write some tests for each function. For this, I'll be using a testing header and C file I have written included in the boilerplates. For now, that file is a nightmare, so I won't explain it, but I'll try to clean it up and make a video for how to write a testing system. Let's open the testing slash standard slash vector dot C file and write some tests. I have never done testing like this before, but I believe it is an important part of making sure your code works like how you want it to. We won't write a ton of tests, and I'm sure we will miss some important tests, but for this video we are just doing some basic testing. For a bonus challenge, please try to think up some tests you could write. To test, you define arc test and give it a name that matches what you are testing, like compare things, and add curly braces to the end. Then inside, you can write code like normal, and to check the output, you can use arc check, with a boolean expression on the inside. For example, we will have a cool var, that is 24, and a chill var, that is for 20. We will test to see if these are not equal, which they are not. Now you should have everything needed to start the challenge. I'd recommend pausing the video and trying the bonus challenge now. We will be testing with 32-bit integers, and so we need to create a testing compare data function. All we have to do is dereference the pointers as 32-bit ints and check the values. All right, for the tests, first we can add, remove by index, and check that the vector is holding the correct values. I'll be using references instead of creating pointers just to keep things simple. Then we can do the same thing, but with regular remove. Just remember to pass that callback into the vector creation function. Next, we can check that the size is working. And lastly, to check that an error is working, we can try to get out of bounds. We can now run the tests, make sure everything works as it should, and for those on Linux and probably Mac, run Valgrind to see if we have any memory leaks. Sadly, for Windows, I don't know if there is a tool to check memory leaks like Valgrind. There should be an error output to a file within our test folder. I'm not sure that it will have anything on Windows, but on Linux it should have an error output when we went out of bounds. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like help or if there is something wrong with the video, please check the description for ways to contact me. YouTube comments are not a good place to reach me.